It's our last day in New York, our fourth and final. Mm -hmm. And we had this master plan about how we were going to get up bright and early and get to Metro Textiles, one of our favorite places, right whenever they opened. And this is what we found. Womp womp. They are closed. He's not here yet. I don't even know if the hours that we saw online are accurate anymore, but we're so close. But we can't get in. Um, we really don't have a ton of time today either because we have to be uptown for the Downton Abbey exhibit by 10.30. And we're meeting Amber's family. Their train gets in at 9.30. So we might just end up going sitting in a coffee shop. We thought about going to a trim store, but Pacific doesn't open till 8.30. That's about 20 minutes from now. So... I don't know what we're gonna do. We had a whole plan. Mm. It does say in case of emergency, please call. Does this qualify as an emergency? Bad enough emergency. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it's for the best. It's like you had no more space in your suitcase. True, no more fabric. <laughs> Maybe it's a sign. So we'll let you know what we end up doing, but mm. we may not be going to Metro this year, which will be the first year ever we haven't come. Mm -hmm. Well, we came, but first year ever we haven't shopped. So. Stay tuned. Okay, well, we ended up going back to the hotel, trekking out, carrying all of our luggage down. There's a lot of it and it's very heavy. I'm probably gonna have to check my bag because I've added a bag since we've gotten here. Um, and then we went to Pacific Trimming where I found some colored, like multicolored, um tassel trim it's really cute and i got some buttons to match my jessica dress that green linen so now we are headed to penn station to head uptown to go to the downton abbey museum downton abbey exhibit you know what museum it is it's not really a museum oh it's not really a museum just some space with the downton abbey exhibit so I'll check back when we get there. Very loud and hectic rush hour. <laughs> okay, we made it up to the Downton Abbey Exhibit Tradition. I can only take video out here though, so this is really all you're gonna get to see. Um, I'll try and take some pictures inside if I can, but we'll see. Footwear from the Stuart Weitzman collection of historic shoes. So it's all ready, super cool. I'm about to sneak oh my peek gosh, of what yes. like the torture <laughs> shoes <laughs> with like all the toes spread apart and how long your foot was spikes. Just the reverse heel. Super cool. And they're going to let me video in here, so I'll be able to take you with me. These are million dollar sandals. Well, a reproduction of the million dollar sandals. These are all colonial shoe buckles that were um, excavated from Washington Heights. That's what they used to look like back in the day. 
and they found all of these in the ground. Here's some fun platforms. Bat claws. What are they called? Bat claws. Bat so your feet don't get wet? Bat clogs so that your feet don't get wet from the Ottoman Empire time. That's cool. Boudoir shoes. Very sexy. These are from a farewell performance of a ballerina named. What was it? Heather Watts. Heather Watts. Look how like worn down they get. I know they have to replace them like daily, but I didn't know they got that worn down. So these are Cinderella from Broadway um, from 2002, but Stuart Weitzman designed these. They're very sparkly and beautiful. Oh, sorry, 2013. I was one year off. This, these are spectator pumps signed by the Yankees. Any Yankees fans out there? That's kind of cool. These belong to Ginger Rogers. And these are Madonna sandals. Salvatore Ferragamo. They were in these were designed for Sophia Loren, Sophia Loren originally, and they are handmade needlepoint lace. And these are <coughs> peep toe spectators. <coughs> um, the woman these were made for married a king, American-born divorced lady who married a, a king, like Meghan Markle. Here she is wearing them. Okay, who has seen Kinky Boots? These are the boots from the original Broadway production worn by Billy Porter. Look how big they are, because obviously they're for a man. So they are like very big boots. I mean, I, I remember wearing the narrow shoes too, but these. Oh, totally. They're so <laughs> What number is this? Um, are they not numbered? No, they are. Yeah. One, yeah. It's like etched on the side. Oh, I see that. It's probably 1930. I'll take eight. I like number eight. You'll take what? Number eight. Okay. Top you right. Like a oh, Hirachi yeah. look. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see how narrow yeah. that middle I feel like one of my toes, though, would just come right out the side. Probably. Yeah. 1932. These were made by Connie Sheik Creations. Oh, Connie. I bet the dyeing process back then was cumbersome as well. Probably. Uh, yeah, I think it would just conform to your arch. 
talking about these shoes here that have this like elastic -y thing that obviously changes shape whenever you step your foot inside them. But these are all from the mid 50s and 70s. Benton platform. These are all from the early 1900s. These are pretty modern. Sling back. They are from 1964, but designed by Stuart Weitzman. These are, oh, not Stuart, Seymour. That must have been his father. Also Seymour Watson, or er, uh, Weitzman. And then look at these cool ones. These are from 1964. Leather and rhinestone. Then we have mid century Christian Dior. Actually, those are probably pretty valuable today. 1960s, look at these. Thong sandals. That's from Enzo of Roma. That's the maker. Keep toe plat uh, platform shoes from 1972. Also very modern with an ankle strap. And these are Italian pumps from the 70s. These are from the late 50s. Super cool. I'd wear those today. These are 1956. Mario Maraolo. Cool mesh. Look at these. 1972, Stuart Weitzman. And some Yves Saint Laurent with a cute bow. 1967. Adorable. So this next part is exploring how, like what influenced the design of shoes. And so we have some architecture influence and you can see how different buildings um, might be represented in these heels. Look at those. Right? Can't you see the building architecture in all of them? It's very cool. These are inspired by the Chrysler building in New York City. Super cool, right? Here, let me show you the back or the side. So fun. These are all film, uh, film inspired shoes. Or they were worn in movies. So we've got these old movies. Rita Hayworth. <laughs> Maybe they were designed for film. Um, allowed Hollywood costume designers to dodge the restrictive production code. Biblical temptresses and Roman empresses defied the code's prohibition against semi nudity and inspired a fashion for gold and silver sandals. Super cool. European inspiration. 
So there's a really fun story behind these. See how the backs are elasticated? So it was a husband and wife team. Um, this is Beth Levine. She was the designer and her husband was the salesman, but they thought that their shoes would sell better if they had a man's name in them. So they're all marked with Herbert Levine. And she bought the patent to that elasticized back to help keep them on the back of your heels um, for six months. But they got so popular that the guy who originally owned the patent took it back to sell it to other shoemakers so they don't get credited with it. But you see that in shoes today, so that's cool. Here are some more of her designs. More Herbert Levine. So it, last year, Stuart Weitzman and the New York Historical Society sponsored a design competition for high school students in the tri-state area. They Students um, submitted shoe designs in one of two categories, socially conscious fashion and material innovation. And these are the winning designs in each category. So there's actually a tie for socially conscious fashion. Um, this one, number one. Yeah, for us. Oh, definitely. And this one, number two. <laughs> I know, but if and then this is the winner for material so innovation. That's unbelievable. That was really cool. It's at the New York Historical Society. If you're in the area, you want to come check it out. Um, quite a collection there, if I do say so myself. I kind of hoped it would be more like modern vintage rather than like antique vintage but it was still cool good history lesson um and a peek into the future of shoe design as well so there's an exhibit here for like remembering bill cunningham that we might go see he's the famous fashion photographer um so i'll let you know if i can film down there or not we're at the bill cunningham exhibition now it's really sweet they have a lot of his like artifacts i guess and they have like some of his articles and then this really sweet video that was made and then like some of the hats that he had designed earlier in his career too it's not very big in here but it's nice sad sad the city is in our rear view mirror this is the coastline train, which I can't say that I've ever taken this one before. Really, well, it's not so much pretty, but it was pretty back there. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we're headed to the airport. Our trip is over. Um, we didn't do anything after the museum. We just got back to our hotel, got our stuff, and got to the train station. So we didn't miss anything there, but um, we were just remissing over our trip and what we're going to do different next year um, and acknowledging all of the things that we learned from last year so it's like a little bit every time you learn a little bit more um, found a couple new stores this year that was good found our way around a little bit better this year that was good uh, stayed a little bit longer this year, met some friends, so it was a very, very fulfilling trip, but I think we're both ready to be back home, be clean, <laughs> get the filth of the city off of us, and start planning our projects. I'm home! Look who's happy to see me, supposedly. Sunny buns? Sunny buns? Oh, anyways, here I am, guys. I am tired. It was a long day. Um, the flying was fine. It was just getting to the airport that was exhausting. I ended up having to check my suitcase that was full of fabric. And then, thank goodness, B&J gave me, like, a really big tote bag. 
because I put all the stuff that I brought in that suitcase, like all the clothes I wore, toiletries, all that, in that bag. And that was my carry-on, and then my backpack was my personal item. So I had a lot of luggage. And the suitcase, it had all my fabric in it minus three pieces, I think. And guess how much it weighed? It was a little more than 30 pounds. Whoops! But it's really it's all really good stuff and I'm all and I'm really excited to sew it up Amber and I were already talking about our plans what we're gonna get to first and all of that so I know you guys will see all of that here very soon um, but I just wanted to wrap up this year's um, vlog series daily vlog series um, by asking you guys if you have any questions for me about New York City specifically the garment district and shopping for fabric there um any questions at all leave them in the comments down below or on the dm dm me on any of my social media um i'll compile them all and do another video or maybe like a live uh facebook live or instagram live or whatever um, and try and answer some of them so that you guys can maybe try and figure out a way to get to the garment district yourself. But it was a lot of fun and I just really need a shower and then a bath and then sleep and then food probably. Um, but thanks for following along. It's been so much fun reading all of your comments. And I'm glad you enjoyed coming along with me. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.